Welcome back to the News at 10. The leadership of the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria has appealed to the federal government to ease the business of broadcasting in the country. The broadcasters who met with the Minister of Information and Culture and the Director General of the National Broadcasting Commission discussed issues regarding licenses regime and how to actualize the federal government's digital switchover. The chairman of the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria, Bon, Mr. John Momo, leads other members of the organization to a joint meeting of the Minister of Information and Culture and the Director General of the National Broadcasting Commission in Abuja. The meeting is at the instance of Bon to discuss issues that affect the business of broadcasting in Nigeria, including the licensing regime and the federal government's planned digital switchover. Video cameras were only allowed at the opening as the meeting goes into closed doors. Some moments after, journalists are re-invited for the outcome of the meeting, as the chairman of Bonn, Mr. Momo, highlights the issues discussed, including how to make the planned digital switch over work. At the instance of our members, as Bonn chairman, I had sought uh, to the audience of the minister uh, so that we can let them know that there was a lot of hemorrhaging in the industry and that a lot of our members uh, were finding it very difficult uh, to operate. Um, we also raised a couple of concerns that we had and uh, cleared some misconceptions about uh, the DSO. And I must say that we have a very good picture. Uh, we had uh, a lot of agreements in terms of uh, uh, working with us to ensure that uh, we uh, do not have a situation where we, we will not be able to operate as uh, broadcasters. Um, and to uh, say that uh, we're going to be living here um, with smiles on our faces will be an under, uh, understatement. I think we're very happy, uh, but it's, it's work in progress. Uh, it's a good meeting. While describing the meeting as a success, uh, both the Minister uh, of Information and Culture and the Director General the of the NBC emphasize the need for government to work with Bonn and save the broadcast industry. The entire meeting is to ensure the survival of the industry and to ensure that the industry thrives. Uh, the good thing about the meeting is that both sides, both the regulators, government on one side and the broadcasting organization, uh, we come to the conclusion that we need to work together to save the industry. From the position of the regulatory institution, we're very clear about the fact that our relationship with broadcasting organizations of Nigeria is very central to the health of our industry. And the issues that were raised today and which we attempted to, to clear one after the other, uh, just strengthen our, our resolve that we need to work together to sanitize our industry and to assist the industry to grow. Broadcasting is very central to national development and the kind of work that our broadcasters are doing uh, over the last couple of years uh, has, has shown that Nigeria uh, has tremendous potentials that we're also gradually beginning to fulfill. If the assurance is from the federal government and the regulatory agency to work with the broadcasting organizations of Nigeria is anything to go by, then it is within the reach of investors to unlock the rich potentials in the business of broadcasting in Nigeria. More than 400 participants from 60 countries are expected at the 2018 International Press Institute Congress, which will be hosted here in Nigeria. And ahead of the program, members of the local organizing committee had a meeting with media professionals in Lagos to brief them on plans on the ground and expectations from them. A member of the committee, Malam Ismaila Issa, says the Congress will project the country in good light. When we attended the meeting at Washington where we signed a memorandum of understanding, we told them, you have embassies in Nigeria, ask your embassy whether Nigeria is safe for you to go or not. We are Nigerians. We are over 180 million. We are there. So why somebody think 
Nigeria is not a safe place. There is no country in the world in most cases that do not have some problems. And it not being magnified the way and manner they are magnifying our own, as if everywhere is not safe. And bringing the world media, the entire world media, into Nigeria in June next year, God willing, it means a lot to this country. Beside the reassurance you will give the world community about our country, you are reopening the country to the outside world. An emerging player in the Nigerian lottery market is offering Nigerians a lifeline to be more adventurous with its dream and win lottery promo. At a banquet in Lagos, where the logo for the Prima Lotto is unveiled, the chairman, Mr. Mario Camilleri, explains that Prima Lotto is ready to change people's lives as well as perception of lottery in Nigeria. It's a night of fascinating dots of razzmatazz with a huge bounty for those who love to take chances and win big. The Nigerian Lottery Regulatory Commission is redefining the game of lottery with fair play and transparency. Those two ingredients that are really key to the success of a lottery, integrity and transparency, we are bringing to bear to this business. As Tati Prima Lotto comes into the Nigerian market with its offer for Nigerians to win more, it's engaging with the online population to participate. Tati Prima Lotto says it is not just raising revenue but giving back to people's lives. To us, lottery is far more than just paying our price and generate revenue. It is also about giving back to the community through taxes, good causes funds, and corporate social responsibilities. Tati Prima Lotto Nigeria is poised to bring dreams to reality by improving people's well-being and giving a sense of adventure and fulfillment. And we're also going to be digital, so we're going to be very, very heavily on, on social media and digital marketing. A pilot exercise of the lottery is held and the winner goes home with a million naira. Someone's life has just changed right here today at the Totti Prima lunch. Ladies and gentlemen, our very first winner. Keep the applause. The management of Totti Prima Lotto is also looking beyond the game of lottery to really touch in people's lives. Well, Totti is the name, actually the name of my father, which is synonymous with integrity and honesty. It's offering a game that's a lot simpler to play than the traditional 590. It's offering winnings at, at three different levels, so winnings that are easier to achieve. Um, so we will have uh, winners at different categories um, during every, every draw. Um, and it's offering, as you can see from our event tonight, creativity um, uh, and I think a world-class lottery operator. After all said and done, Tati Prima Lotto is saying it's time you walk the talk, dream, and win big. Let's get the day's major business headlines now from Anne Mawodo. You first. First Bank. Nigeria's central bank may be inclined towards easing headline interest rate by 200 basis points in 2018. And that's according to the head of economic research at Ecobank Group in London, Gyai Min Nonyani. She was speaking to Channel's television today as she discussed the foreign exchange market, the euro bond, diaspora remittances and government revenues. At the moment, um, because of NPLs, you know, there's a problem with regards to lending, um, which of course makes sense. Credit risk remains very high. And for as long as we see credit risk being high, um, that there will always be a problem with regards to lending. Um, and that somehow makes the economy a bit subdued in terms of economic activity. But we're anticipating that the economy is likely to pick up which of course will help to generate some some liquidity in the markets and um, then maybe um, as long if the assuming that the CBN begins to lower rates um, hopefully next year then we're likely to see some reduced reduction in the um, 
the, the borrowing rates and um, easing of pressure by um, the borrowers. It depends on how things progress in the markets. Um, if the food cost still remains um, exceptionally high, because at the moment that's what's, that's been a main um, driver for inflation, while we see inflation really sticky downwards. In the meantime, the CBN plans to sell 117.1 billion naira worth of treasury bills at an auction that will happen tomorrow. 26.1 billion naira will be offered in a three-month paper. 11 billion naira will be offered in a six-month bill. And 80.03 billion naira will be offered on the one-year note. Results of this auction will be announced on Thursday, November the 30th. The CBN issues treasury bills twice a month. This is just to help the government finance its budget deficit, reduce money supply growth and provide an avenue for lenders to manage liquidity. The local stock market recovered sharply by more than half of a percent at the close of today's trading after the brief 31 basis points drop in Monday's session. To tell us more about this is Chimeze Obiwago. Welcome to the Stock Market Report. A lot of bargain hunting took place at the equities market today with a small cap insurance company, WAPIC, driving the total transaction volume. Over 1 billion shares were traded and WAPIC alone churned out about 655 million shares. Transaction value was also huge, about 5 billion naira in 4,089 deals. At the end of the trading session, the all share index reversed into the green to close at 0.68%. This is all thanks to Nigerian breweries and Dangote Cement. The gains in those two stocks placed the consumer goods sector as the highest gainer amongst the sectoral indices. The oil and gas sector was the only laggard, no thanks to Mogul. Market breadth was very positive. 24 stocks posted gains, while 11 posted declines, with a tenor oil gaining most in terms of price movement, while PZ led the decliners on the chart. Traders expect this positive sentiment to continue in the midweek trading. And that was the stock market report. I'm Chimezie Obi Iwago. While well, U.S. and European stock markets also closed today, all positive as investors digested individual stock news and comments from the Federal Reserve Chair nominee Jerome Powell. But let's see how other markets fared today. Thank you for watching Business News tonight. I'm Anne Umawadu. Back to you, Marachi. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Anne. Still ahead on the news at 10. Tap to use video assistant referee for the first time at the African Nations Championship next year. More coming up in sports news. Stay with us.